Today is a pretty big day because Jagex has finally released an updated Trailblazer blog, giving us more information about each area and what we get when we unlock them. Now, we already knew the areas. It was going to be Mistelin start out, Karamja with the tutorial, and then choosing between the seven areas, you get to choose three, which are Asgarnia, Kandarin, Mauritania, the Desert, Fremenic, Tyranwyn, or the Wilderness. If you'd like to know more about how the League works itself in terms of XP rates, relics, and other unlocks, you can check that out in a different blog, uh, and I will be making an updated video on the entirety of League and my own route soon. I just thought I'd get this video out to let you guys know uh, some of my first feedback and little things that maybe you may not have noticed through each of these gifts, which I'm going to slow down, and we can kind of cover each area individually. The top right is going to show some basic, uh, very sought after items for each area. Uh, and I'd like to thank Manmade Magic uh, from Reddit for creating that picture that you guys just saw. And uh, let's get into this. So I'm not gonna cover every single word that each of these say. If you want to, you can pause the video uh, for yourself and kind of read some of the stuff. But I would like to go over some of the quests and uh, some of the Slayer unlocks that we get from each area. Uh, so they have said that every Slayer Master will assign the same tasks from the same waiting and everything. And uh, some of the important stuff to know is that uh, each area is going to have its own individual tasks added to it for Slayer. Uh, Slayer is a pretty important thing that a lot of people care about. So I figured I would include that. And uh, let's go through some of the quests for Mislin that you automatically unlock. Now we do know with certainty that if a quest is auto-completed, that you will not actually be able to uh, complete the quest or get XP for that quest. So it'll just give you the unlock, but it won't give you the XP reward for it. So for the original start, we get Dragon Slayer, Druidic Ritual, Elemental Workshop, Tears of Gothics, Bone Voyage, as well as Dig Sight, Fairy Tale 1 and 2, Lost City, Nature Spirit, Priest in Peril, and Restless Ghost. Those are the starting quests. And that's mainly because with most routes, you won't be able to complete all those quests. Uh, you know, there's very specific routes you have to choose for each of those to get those quests done so they decided to give it to us as most of the content for those quests or for that area involves those quests uh now they do give us a bunch of diary unlocks as well in each area and if you guys would want to again you can pause the video at certain points kind of write down some stuff for your own notes and see which diary tasks you will and will not have to plan for uh and it's very good info they've given us actually I was very surprised to see how much was included in these gifts. Moving on to Karamja, which is our second unlock and our only free unlock apart from Mistlin, we will be able to get the Fire Cape, the Infernal Cape, Obsidian Items. And the reason they've given it to us as a free unlock is for a few reasons. One is because it gives a good lesson uh, for area unlocks. Two, the race to Infernal Cape. Who doesn't want that? And three, it solves the player-owned house issue because everyone will be able to get at least one player-owned house, assuming they can get Karamja, and because everybody gets Karamja, everybody can have a player-owned house. Now, the quests that we will get will be Shiloh Village and Jungle Potion, and that will be it. We will only get those two quests for Karamja. Again, if you want to, you can pause the video at certain points if you're trying to take down notes yourself. I have slowed these down from the original uh, speed, and you can get more information on diary tasks and other things for this area. Our first actual unlock that you will have to choose to unlock will be Asgarnia. And this area is actually pretty notable. It'll have defenders, it'll have god wars, it'll give you the access to pest control, and uh, it also completes the free-to-play area, uh, and also adding some members areas, of course. So the only quest you're actually going to get with this for free will be Merlin's Crystal. Uh, pretty surprising that you only get one quest, but I guess that's just how it is. Uh, for this area, they figured that that was uh, deemed to be the only quest necessary to give us. As far as Slayer goes, the new Slayer unlocks that you will get from this area will be Black Dragons, Blue Dragons, Hellhounds, Skeletal Wyverns, Spiritual Creatures, and Trolls. One more thing to consider uh, when choosing your areas, by the way, completely off topic from Asgarnia, is uh, how many herb or tree patches are in each area. So for example, I know Asgarnia gives two herb patches. Uh, but there is a route you can take. I believe it's the Wilderness, Desert, and Tyranwyn, where if you choose those, as well as you're starting to, you will have access to zero herb patches. Now, I don't know if that'll matter that much. Uh, we don't know how relics are going to work. Uh, we don't know if there's going to be something where, like, you kill uh, something that drops herbs, but it drops a whole potion. Who knows? Probably doesn't do that. But 
it may play into effect on what you choose to unlock. Uh, so maybe note some stuff like that down. Moving on to the desert. It's a pretty straightforward area. However, the unlocks that you get from this are pretty crazy. Uh, for one, you're going to get ancients, darts, the ability to do a uh, mage training arena for uh, bones to peaches and uh, other stuff, blackjacking, granite mining, pyramid plunder, uh, all that stuff is going to be unlocked from that area. <clears throat> and you also are going to get the desert treasure quest as well as temple of Ikov, tourist trap, waterfall, troll stronghold, death plateau, Ichthlorin's little helper, Gertrude's cat, and Inakra's lament. Now that's pretty crazy for the amount of quests you get. Uh, like Troll Stronghold and Death Plateau is going to be pretty interesting uh, for people who choose to unlock Desert as well as Asgarnia uh, so that they can teleport up to God Wars very quickly without having to do the quest. Now, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe that you don't have to have the Desert area unlocked to do Troll Stronghold or Death Plateau uh, or some of these quests. However, you will uh, just unlock it automatically by unlocking this area, which is pretty cool. The Slayer unlocks you're going to get are Bandits, Dust Devils, Calphites, Lizards, Pyre Fiends, and if you do the Contact Quest, you'll also get Scabarites. Now, if you thought the Desert had a lot, Kandrian probably has the most content out of every single region. I'm going to make a guess that Kandrian will be the most picked uh, region by far. For one, you can get Piety, you can get the Torso, you can get one part of the Cannon, obviously in the second part with Asgarnia. You'll be able to get the Dragon Sim, which is pretty important. Zenite jewelry, trident, all kinds of stuff that I'm probably missing out on. And on top of that, you're also going to get a ton of other quests and you're going to get some pretty big Slayer unlocks. So the quest list is just absolutely massive. Monkey Madness 2, the uh, hot air balloon uh, for Gnome Stronghold from Enlightened Journey, plus the Enlightened Journey quest. Eyes of Glufry, RFD the Awowagi part, not the entire quest. Monkey Madness 1, Grand Tree, Trinom Village, Troll Stronghold, Death Plateau, Watchtower, King's Ransom, Black Knight's Fortress, Holy Grail, Merlin's Crystal, Murder Mystery, One Small Favor, and Rune Mysteries. Now, some of these quests do overlap with the desert. So surprisingly, if you're going like a Kandra and Asgarnia route, you won't need the desert to autocomplete Death Plateau and Troll Stronghold, for example. But if you go desert Asgarnia, you won't need Kandran for that. So you can kind of mix and match and you'll still get some of the quests done. Also, a might, uh, you know, a, a good idea might be to unlock Kandran to get those quests if you're also unlocking Asgarnia so that you don't have to do the quests. Uh, they'll just be automatically unlocked unless you care about getting the XP reward. Now, that was a mouthful. I just said so many words. But you also are going to get for Slayer, Black Demons, Kraken, Chaos Druids, Mithril Dragons, Ogres, and Smoke Devils added to your task list. Some notable unlocks you'll get from the Fermentic area include Kingdom, assuming that you do the uh, Throne of Miscellanea or, and or Royal Trouble quest, the ability to get the Nets Not Helm as well as the Nets Not Face Guard, the ability to do Dagonoth Kings for Rings, Seer Coal, Mudstaff, and Dragon Axe, the access to Lunars, access to Keldegrim for things like Blast Furnace as well as the Gold Leaf and Marble Blocks for upgrading your house, and God books. Overall, this area is pretty cool to unlock. I'm curious to see how some people will play it into their routes. Now, as far as quests that you unlock, there is a buttload of quests, including Horror from the Deep. You will get the Alfred, uh, I forget his name, Bar Crawl, Scorpion Catchers, DS2, dra that is Dragon Slayer 2, which means you will get access to Vorkath as well as Rune and Addy Dragons. You will get the Legends quest completed, Heroes, Shield of Arav, Merlin's Crystal, Underground Pass, Biohazard, Plague City, Waterfall, Dream Mentor, Lunar Diplomacy, Fremi Trials, Rune Mysteries, Edgar's Ruse, Troll Stronghold, Death Plateau, Tale of Two Cats, Ixlorin's Little Helper, Gertrude's Cat, Animal Magnetism, and Ernest the Chicken, as well as Client of Corand, which I'm not exactly sure why that's in there, but I have a feeling it's for some other quest, and I'm just kind of blanking on that at the moment. For Slayer Unlocks, you will get Basilisks, Cockatrice, Dagonoths, Jellies, Kurasks, and Turoths. Mauritania. Mauritania. Meet Mauritania. My Mauritania locked ultimate Iron Man. All right. This, the region to the east will be every PVMer's wet dream. It's going to have, or wet nightmare, maybe. I don't know. It's going to have the nightmare. It's going to have theater of blood. It's going to have barrows. It's going to have a lot of stuff that people are going to want to do, pretty much. Uh, and with that, we're actually not getting that many quests. You'll have to do a lot yourself because a lot of Mauritania is self sufficient. 
which is why some players choose to only play in Mauritania. Meet Swampletics. As far as quests go, you will get Darkness of Hollow Vale, In Aid and Search of the Mirror Queue, Great Brain Robbery, Creature of Fankenstrain, Cabin Fever, Pirate's Treasure, Rum Deal, Zogre Flesh Eaters, Big Chompy Bird Hunting, and the RFD portion called Pirate Pete. You will also unlock Banshees, Bloodvelds, Cave Horrors, Gargoyles, Necreals, Vampires, and for some reason I don't see Aberrant Spectres on here. I will go ahead and ask about that. Uh, because I don't see it there, although I do know they have them in the tower. I don't know why they wouldn't be added to your Slayer list, uh, but maybe they're just not. Maybe they're not included in there. Uh, I don't know. So a lot of the cool stuff you're going to also get in this area, apart from PVM, is going to be the Sepulcher. You're going to get access to Blood Shards for the Blood Fury. Uh, there's going to be quite a lot of cool things here. You're going to Ecto if you want to do prayer that way. We're going to get the ability to get the Amulet of the Damned through uh, the... What's that fire thing called? I don't know. Anyways... Mauritania will be probably unlocked, I'm going to guess, second or third most out of all seven of the regions that you'll have to choose to unlock. Big PVM area. Moving on to tier and win, I cannot mention Zora without mentioning that I don't believe you'll be able to create darts unless you unlock the desert area. However, you can get darts through imps and uh, other drops and use them for a blowpipe, I believe. So if you do unlock tier and win, you may want to consider the desert. I don't want to say that 100%, but if you're choosing it for Zora, that could be a region, a region, a reason to choose that region. Anyways, there will be Zora, there will be Gauntlet, there will be Zolcano, and some other notable things in the area, such as crystal equipment and uh, some cool training methods. Now, as far as quests go for tier and win, you will unlock the Eagle's Peak, Song of the Elves, Making History, Mep 1 and 2, which is Morning's End Part 1 and 2, Big Chompy Bird Hunting, Sheep Herder, Roving Elves, Waterfall, Regicide, Underground Past, Biohazard, and Plague City. Now, I don't believe you'll have to do any quests in the area. There might be one or two quests in the area that you'll have to do, but unlocking the area pretty much unlocks all the content to the area through these quest unlocks, which is pretty interesting. You can just get right into whatever it is that you were hoping to do there. Now, uh, for Slayer, you'll get Bloodvelds, Dark Beasts, Elves, Karasks, Necreal, and Water Fiends, and a lot of that is because there is a Slayer Cave uh, in Prif Danas, which is the uh, main city of Tyr and Wynn. Uh, so that's that's kind of cool. A uh, lot of stuff to do there. It'll be interesting to see how people choose to play that area. I'd like to mention one more time that if there's anything that you want to know specifically about a region that may be included in here, you can obviously pause at each area. If I don't cover it, uh, you can obviously see it on screen. Uh, as far as we know for the wilderness, this is what they've told us. PvP deaths will be treated like a PvM death with your lost items moving to a gravestone and the gravestone moving to your spawn location. So this means that basically it's going to be an Iron Man in the wilderness. And if somebody decides to kill you, your stuff's just going to go to a gravestone at your spawn. Not a big deal. Obviously, you might need some money to pay for that gravestone. Uh, PVM deaths are unaffected. So they work exactly the same way as they do now in the live game. If you'd like to, you can go die to Venonatus and see how that works. Uh, but that's up to you. Anyways, the only quest we're going to get with the Wilderness, which is our final region to cover, is Eagle's Peak. And this is probably for box traps. The uh, Slayer unlocks we're going to get are Bears, Ents, Ice Giants, Lava Dragons, Revenants, and Skeletons. The Wilderness will be a very, very interesting region to see people play. Because I'm sure a lot of people are playing it for the purpose of PvPing, kind of messing around with other people. Also, Last Man Standing will be disabled. Uh, during this, so there will be no last man standing, although you probably still will have access to the Ferox Enclave for the bank, I assume. Not 100% sure. Anyways, you'll be able to unlock the Wilderness Rings, obviously, from bosses, the Revenant loot, the uh, wards from the different bosses, Dragon Pick. You'll have access to Corp, which would be pretty cool, and you'll have access to the Mage Training Arena, not or Mage Arena, sorry, for MA1 and MA2 capes. You'll also have access to the Wilderness God Wars for things like Dragon Boots. And uh, it'll be very cool to see how people decide to uh, to play the wilderness. I'm very curious to see what you guys would like to pick. Please let me know down in the comments below what uh, what regions you're thinking of picking if you're playing this. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and sub. It helps and uh, goes a long way. Thank you all so much for watching and uh, have a great day.